New backup quarterback in town. We're talking about all of it with Justin Rogers coming up from the Detroit News. It's a Wednesday edition of Locked on Leos. You are Locked on Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's do this, everybody. Locked on Lions, Locked on Podcast. Now we're going to Wednesday, August 31st. Is it really the end of August? Summer's over. This sucks. Thursday, September 1st is tomorrow. Matt Derry with you on the Locked on Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Coming up on the show, we got the practice squad roster. We got a late roster move today. We got Benito Jones in. We got Jermar Jefferson out. Justin Rogers from the Detroit News is going to join us. I spoke with Justin before the Jefferson news, so that part of the interview, just bear with it, but I'll give you that. Uh, We got a lot to discuss here on the show. The Nate Sudfeld era? Oh, my God. The backup quarterback crop is so bad. Nate Sudfeld. The Eagles tried to tank a game a few years ago. Doug Peterson put Nate Sudfeld into a game. He threw an interception. He couldn't throw a ball, a forward pass. He's the new Lions backup quarterback. David Blau is out. So much to get into right here on Locked On Lions. Thank you for making, uh, thanks for making this your first listen each and every day right here on the program. Who are we brought to you by today? I'm like all over the place. We are brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. All right. Find us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Locked On Lions on Twitter, Matt Dairy uh, Facebook fan page, and we are on YouTube, the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Watch the show every single day. Uh, I got good energy today. I'm fired up. The news of the morning, of course, David Blau let go. Lions want to bring him back in the practice squad. As of right now that we're recording, I have not seen that he's on the practice squad. Nate Sudfeld, ex of the Niners and Eagles, is the new backup quarterback. Um, the former Indiana Hoosier, he wasn't even good in college. All right. Maybe this is Antoine Randall L from, uh, from IU, excuse me, telling Brad Holmes and everybody to go get this guy. But yesterday I said, Chris Traveler, Nathan Peterman, Josh Rosen, Josh Johnson, and Will Greer were all guys that were available. And I forgot about Nate Sudfeld. Here's what I'll say. Um, (laughs) it is what it is. It really is. The Lions aren't. If Jared Goff gets hurt, the season's over. That's it. They've got to keep Goff healthy because I don't think Nate Sudfeld's any good either. I told you Will Greer would be the best option, but that's Matt Derry's opinion. That is not Brad Holmes or the staff's opinion. And if you watched Hard Knocks last night, it's a collaboration. Everybody gets to chime in. So Nate Sudfeld, ex of the Eagles and Niners and Washington football team, he's in. Blau is out. Let me say this about the cutting of David Blau and the releasing of David Blau. This had to have been very, very difficult for Dan Campbell. This had to have been extremely hard for Dan Campbell with the relationship that he has with David Blau, how the teammates, everybody in Detroit, in Allen Park, really, really rooted for David Blau, picked him up when he was flat on his butt in Pittsburgh. The guy was hurt. The guy just doesn't have maybe the greatest of talents, but he rallied the team. So... While cut down day for some is just, let's tell you who got released and say goodbye. For the Lions, I think it means something when a guy like David Blau gets let go. It's a very difficult decision for Holmes and Campbell. But they had to make it because Blau and Boyle just weren't cutting it in their mind. And that's why Sudfeld is in and Blau is out. But you got to feel like that's a difficult decision for Campbell to make because he really, really loved the guy. You could just tell. The guy gave it his all. But... He didn't make the team. And so that's number one. Number two, today the team picked up an extra defensive tackle, a guy that had a really good training camp and preseason for the Dolphins, Benito Jones, ex of Ole Miss, who the last couple of years has been on the Dolphins practice squad. This is a kid that flashed in the preseason, had a very good game, if you go back and watch the tape, against the Bucs earlier in the preseason. He is in to make room for Jones, 
the Lions had to get rid of somebody today, had to make a roster move. And so Jamar Jefferson has been let go. The team is currently on their 53-man roster, only carrying three running backs, DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, and come on, Craig, Craig Reynolds. Uh, practice squad. The running back, they do have a running back on the practice squad in Justin Jackson, who the Lions let go yesterday. Not a surprise, Garrett Griffin, Savion Smith, A.J. Parker, Tom Kennedy, Justin Jackson, James Houston are all back. Also, Maurice Alexander, Jared Davis. Yes, the Jared Davis era will never end. Practice squad for the Lions, along with tight end Derek Deese, defensive tackle Bruce Hector, Anthony Pittman, Dan Skipper. And yes, Big Easy gets to stay and have a job. Obina Eze, the big tackle, is on the practice squad as of right now. So, you know, this is this is where this thing is headed right now. There may be more moves. You never know. But uh, Benito Jones, I like that pickup. I'm not crazy about Sudfeld. Jamar Jefferson, a little bit surprised that he was the last guy. I'm, I'm not that surprised that he got let go, but he could be added back to the practice squad. It's in flux. It always is. We still have 12 days before we get ready for Philadelphia to come into town uh, for the season opener. Let's talk about this and more with Justin Rogers from the Detroit News. We're going to do that coming up next. I want to tell you, though, about our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. As you gear up for fall, you need to find the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. That's why LinkedIn Jobs is here, to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in de delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the, the candidates you want to talk to faster. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go and post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Hi, right, folks, as promised, you're on Locked On Lions today. It is a yearly occurrence. I wish we could have him on more, but he's a very busy guy. Justin Rogers, of course, covers the Lions for the Detroit News, joins us for our first uh, video interview together. JR, it's great to see you. I'm on here at least twice a year. I, tr well, I try not to bother you. That's the thing. Like, you know, I, I like all the Lions writers, and I don't want to bug everybody. And, uh, but usually, start of the year, I have to have you on. And here we are, man. Week one is like a couple weeks away. Week one. You know, it's funny. I go into the first week of the season, like, just completely drained. This is this is weirdly maybe the second busiest time of year. It's the draft, obviously, is number one. But, you know, between writing a bunch of season preview stuff where you're writing for, you know, the person that watches one game a year to, to get them all caught up and, um, you know, pumping out some late training camp features and cuts, like, I don't know. I think I've already worked 40 plus hours this week and it's it's Wednesday. <laughs> um, by the way, I brought this up yesterday. I can't stand this two weeks off. Uh, so week one, it's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to wait till 12 more days. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you, you fill in part of that new cycle with cuts, right? And then you've got, I don't know, what four or five days here. You get a long weekend. It's almost like a it's like an extra buy you know with the the 17 week schedule for these players to kind of get their bodies right before going into the season but you know you still need that week of practice so I mean, in reality it's it's only a couple extra days i don't i don't mind it too much i'm gonna i'm gonna use these this long weekend hopefully to to get away all right so let, let's get right to it we're a minute 40 yeah. in and we haven't brought up the new savior in town uh, nate sudfeld i know you're excited i <laughs> I don't think I could care less about a backup quarterback that isn't in contention to sometime be the franchise guy. And that's not what David Blau or Tim Boyle was. And that's what, not what, what Nate Sudfeld is. It's, it's just not, you know, this is a season about making sure Jared Goff is comfortable and unthreatened. He's going to be given the full reign of, of showing what he can do. And that's all it's about. You know, they want a guy obviously that can, 
step in if need be, if, if Goff gets COVID again or, you know, suffers injury, but the guy's pretty durable. But if, if he were to, to suffer something, they want some guy that could come in and, and manage the offense to the, the most basic level. Sudfeld's thrown what 34 passes in the NFL since 2016, 2017. I'm not going back to watch that. <laughs> I think my cat just fell down. Uh, I'm not going back to watch that tape. I'm just, I, I just don't care, but I know he's six foot six. I know he's got the build. I know he's got decent numbers in the preseason and, you know, hopefully we don't see him. I mean, that's honestly, that's, that's what you want. You don't want to see the backup. I don't care about the backup until they draft a guy <laughs> that is going to be the guy down the road, then I just don't care. It's it's overblown. But this organization, whether it was the previous regime or even this regime, they kind of refused to draft a late round guy. Not we're not. I'm not going to un. I'm not going to. You know. How dare uh, you turn down Brad Kaya? And well, Jake that Rudock. was one. Right, that was one. But he doesn't Jake count. Rudock? He was, That's he two. Was terrible. What's that? Rudock. Oh, uh, was Jake a draft pick? Sixth round. I was at a wedding recently in Nashville with Jake Rudock. He's a great guy. By the way, he's at med school right now. Um, wow, I forgot about Jake Rudock. Yeah, I guess so. But, like, I'm not, I don't want to unearth matter. the Malik Willis argument again. But sure. Look, it's, at, it's, I, it's, I, it's a viable conversation, is it not? No question. Look, at, I, I think when Malik Willis dropped in the third round, it would have been a totally realistic conversation to suggest go out and get this guy. But, again, in some even small way – he would have been a, a, a radio topic conversation threat to Goff, even though he's probably not even close to being ready in this year. And that's not what this year is about. It's about building up Goff. It's about giving him ownership and allowing him help craft the playbook and the scheme. This is all about Jared Goff on offense this year. And for better or worse, that, that's just what it is, right? So we're going to see what the, the guy's got. Um, he's, he's had a really great training camp. They want to take all the outside pressures off and, you know, they'll, they'll worry about the quarterback position next year if they need to worry about it. The David Blau story, cute for, for hard knocks, seems like a great guy, is tough. I mean, my goodness, last night they just kept showing every hit he took in the fourth quarter of that game against the Steelers. But I'm assuming he comes back on the practice squad and and, and did he earn, I don't I, you know, he was obviously better than Boyle, but that's not saying much, right? At, at, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of summed it up. Look, it was three games where the passer rating was between 70 and 80. Like, that's not going to get it done. We've seen David Blau in the preseason. We've seen him in the regular season. Mind you, that was was three years ago. Um, he's a guy. And look, at you're right. Wonderful, wonderful human being. One of the nicest guys I've ever covered. Really, really easy to root for him. Uh, I, I think he's a smart guy and there's a value to having smart guys in the, the quarterback room to help your starter prepare in terms of film study, all that kind of an underrated uh, component of being a backup quarterback or practice squad quarterback. But, you know, again, never was the long-term solution for this franchise and really not a guy that I would have trust to, to come into a game and win one for you. Well, that's pretty obvious. We saw that last year in the Pittsburgh game when Goff's arm fell off and he didn't, and, and Campbell didn't bring Blau into the game. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's true. And then you, you saw Tim Boyle actually play three games and, uh, you know, probably better stuff, if you will, using a baseball term, right? Maybe got a little bit better fastball and, um, you know, quick release, but decision making wasn't good. And, um, you know, ultimately he wasn't ever going to be the guy either. He was just here as a placeholder and that's fine with a rebuilding team. You don't want to invest a ton of money in a Mitch Trubisky or a Ryan Fitzpatrick on a rebuilding team. It's about the starter. And if you do, it's about the quarterback you draft and in the, the first round or the second round to, to build them up. And the Lions just aren't there at this stage in their rebuild. Justin Rogers with us covers the Lions does a great job for the Detroit news debt news.com. Any other cuts from yesterday that surprised you or anything that you went, whoa, when uh, when the names came out? I, I would say mild surprise, right? Like there's there was no uh, knock you off your chair type cuts. You know, A.J. Parker was a little bit of a surprise for me. You know, starting Nickelback last year pretty much was the starter all the way up till the, the second preseason game. And, um, you know, I, I thought even if they they preferred Mike Hughes, you know they probably were going to find a way to keep Parker around, and, and I guess in a way they are because he's going to be back on the practice squad when those are formally announced here uh, any minute. But uh, he and then and maybe Pittman, right? You know, a guy that played almost 400 snaps on special teams. You know, fans don't care a whole lot about that, but 
end of the day, it matters. It matters to coaches. Um, and, and he was good in those roles. And that was a bright spot for the Lions last year was was the special team. So I thought, you know, he had a good chance of sticking around as well. But they, they've got a lot of special teams guys, special teams only guys. And so, uh, you know, the numbers game just caught up to them there. Running back, uh, I know there was a little bit of surprise about the Justin Jackson, Jamar Jefferson situation and even Godwin to an extent. But it sounds like Jackson's back in the practice squad. Jefferson makes it. That's a Brad Holmes draft pick. Uh, was that a big deal for you or no? Big deal? No. You know, you're talking about running back four, you know, a guy that might not even be active most weeks. Uh, I, I think the biggest surprise was it. you didn't take the player that performed the best, I think, in the preseason. This was a one where I think they went with potential, uh, developmental potential over production. You know, maybe that doesn't matter with running back four. Maybe that's what you want as a developmental guy, but I, I didn't think Jefferson had it this this preseason. I really thought he would. I thought he was going to take the next step. He was so hungry. Campbell talked about how he came in with this this professional approach, right? He he and Barnes got lumped into uh, an answer at least twice this awesome where he talked about just the way they came in, the more professional approach they had. But on the field, you know, he struggled as a pass catcher throughout training camp. In in the games, you're talking about a guy that was averaging something like. 1.8 or 2.1 yards per carry before he rips off that long run on on a very well blocked uh draw play where i think i might have been able to pick up 15 16 yards so um you know it's just it just wasn't an, an impressive preseason showing jackson i thought ran better but um you know I, I i think there was at least also a thought just talking to some people that they didn't think they'd be able to get jefferson through the waiver wire in the way that they were able to get jackson so they do keep both those guys in the fold and this is the way they thought it was the best way to do it. Lions did make another addition today. We're going to talk about that with Justin as well as just the entire roster and the whole. We'll do that uh, coming up next. I got to tell you first, though, about our friends at Dave. We've all been in a situation at some point in our lives where we're a little tight on cash. Maybe you can't afford you throw a few gallons of gas in your tank or you got a wedding coming up. How are you going to pay for that gift? That's where Dave can help. If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, Get the Dave Banking app. They can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy that gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. No interest, no credit check needed. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E, Dave. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC, future you will thank you with our friends at Dave. Justin Rogers with us from the Detroit News and DebtNews.com. How much fun, by the way, was training camp with hard knocks and everything going on? Or was this kind of like last year? Because Dan Campbell and that staff, as we're now, everybody's getting to see, is 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 pretty crazy. It's it's as easy as the job could be covering Dan Campbell, right? Like it's, it's nice knowing to, that when I'm going to go in and ask a question nine times out of 10, I'm going to get some semblance of, of a straightforward answer, right? Like there's, there's occasionally the time where uh, he'll duck the question appropriate, slow, appropriately slow, trying, you know, not trying to give away too much information or, or maybe speak too freely on an injury. And, and I can respect that, but it's not every question as it's been with some of the coaches that I've covered in the past. So uh, Campbell makes the job easy in a weird way. Um, hard knocks, you know, I, I, I thought they would be more intrusive. There were so many staffers. I mean, it just was unbelievable. The number of, of people they had there. I mean, it had to have been in the ballpark of 40 at, at practice every day, but they, they did a really nice job of, of blending into the background. I never felt like it interfered with my job in any way. And, and kind of the nice thing was watching the program, right? Like, I don't think there was any major revelations to what I saw on a daily basis, but just sometimes that little extra behind the scenes um, view, I, you know, I use the example of, of Calvin Shepard talking to his room about Malcolm Rodriguez. Look, we all knew Malcolm Rodriguez was, had a rocket, you know, strapped to his back. We, we wrote about it. It was very well covered before that episode, but to see him, praising Rodriguez to the linebacker room, using that as motivation for the veterans that were, you know, getting passed up on the depth chart by a rookie was, you know, it was really interesting insight. And there's those little things that were, you know, made, made that show kind of a joy to watch, you know, and I was, I was mentioned to you when we were setting this up last night, you know, there's other things that you, you look at it and you go, okay, well, look at 
when you have five weeks, you, you got to kind of pick some guys to follow around, right? And fortunately, they picked Malcolm Rodriguez, and that story took off for him. But there's other guys they picked. Khalil Pimpleton, right? Really easy local story. Muskegon to Central Michigan. And, um, you know, they, they kind of bent reality a little bit to, to make it seem more dramatic in the show about his roster chances, right? That was a guy <laughs> yeah. that was always, always on the outside looking in, was always considerably behind on the depth chart, got blown away by a guy like Tom Kennedy, who, you know, didn't make the roster, but yet they used him as this uh, dramatic device throughout the show. Or Craig Reynolds, you know, same thing, like just making him seem like he was teetering on the edge of the bubble. And in reality, Craig probably had a job pretty wrapped up about one week in. That became clear, but um, really, it's just it's just a good, it's well done. It's a well done product. They do a great job. The shows are interesting. The music selections are great. The camera work is fantastic. Um, it's it's nice to me that the Detroit fans get to see their team put on a pedestal for for the nation to see. Yeah, and I think the nation's definitely uh, now being introduced to the guy that obviously you and the and the beat writers and everybody that covers the team has been sort of introducing to us uh, throughout last year. Um, team have added Benito out, Jones. Way, really quick, have you, have you figured out what he was talking about with that Metallica quote? Because I still have no <laughs> damn idea. Like, it's a cool quote, great song. I... I have no idea what he was going for there. I I think there I think there's an, that occasional swing and miss from him. You're right. Oh, where yeah. it's like, the, oh, and he can be corny too, right? And I, I don't think that's bad. I think that's part of his authenticity, right? Going back to the race car helmet last year, the shaking the quote unquote shit out of the pants was, it was just corny. But like, yeah. it, who who cares? Like that's just that's who he is, and that's the charm of him. Well, yeah, I mean, like on the first episode when he's, he was talking about Derek Deese and he said Deese nuts or whatever, it's like, I think that was for the, that was probably for the camera, but the rest of it, he this is genuine. This is who he is. I mean, no doubt. No question about it. All right, so they pick up Benito Jones today, a D mm -hmm. tackle. They, they have talked about that they've been thin there. They've had some guys step up. Um, you know, I, I don't think if, you, if Isaiah Bugs or Demetrius Taylor saw it off, walked down Woodward, anybody would know who they are, but... Uh, that talk about that pickup a little bit today, and do you, you think they're done in terms of finding other guys? Literally thin on defensive line, right? I mean, that's that's kind of the the joke. You know, I asked that question really early in camp, just looking at their front seven on this roster. I said, look, there's there's not a lot of size here. It's it's kind of the the opposite of what the previous coaching staff wanted with their 255 pound linebackers and <laughs> uh, Damon Snacks Harrison. Like, look at is obviously different styles of football, but at some point you still have to stop the run. I don't care how pass happy the league has gotten. If you can't stop the run, you're going to be controlled in a football game and dominated. So you, you watch the first preseason game and, and they kind of get run all over by uh, the, the Falcons. And so you're like, okay, is this an issue? And look, they, they made adjustments and they got better with their run fits from, from all three levels. They were getting really good run fits from the secondary and the linebackers, but you still had a little bit of worry about the size, of the interior defensive line, because beyond Aleem McNeil, I don't think they had a guy over 300 pounds on the roster. So um, again, Benito Jones don't know a whole lot about him. You know, I know he was a, a big time prospect, but certainly hasn't played a lot in the pros been hanging out pretty much on the practice squad the last two years in Miami. But uh he definitely fits the the quote unquote girth that the Lions were looking for. He's he's a guy that's close to 320 pounds. He's six one, so that you know that tells you he's even a little bit probably wider. And he, he just had a pretty damn productive preseason, right? So played over 100 snaps, seven tackles, which is always good from the interior. Five quarterback pressures, which you don't really expect from a guy that size. So um, you know I, I'm intrigued. Uh, we're we're waiting here, and probably by the time this airs, we'll know. I'm I'm, I'm intrigued the the corresponding move that the Lions have coming. Um, you know, I kind of reached out to see if maybe a guy was going to get IR to create that room. It doesn't sound that way. You know, obviously those, those things change as the discussions go on, but, uh, you know, I don't know if it's, it's bugs are, are sawed off that that's going to get bounced or, you know, so, some other position they've got to, they've got to move a guy to, to make a room, but I, I like the decision. I think you needed some size there after losing John Penasini retirement. And, you know, maybe it was the one area on the defense that was a, a little shaky going into the season. What room do you like that's improved that you say that room is solid? And then what room maybe, uh, and I think I know that the answer would be, but what, what were, room worries you right now? I'll give you one on both sides of the ball. Look, yeah. I, I think the edge rushers are, are better. 
uh, you know, you bring in Ada Hutchinson and, and obviously that, that takes that room to a different level. I know he said, you know, he was going to be a, a nose down quiet guy, but you watched that episode of hard knocks last night. I, I don't think he can help himself. Like there is a natural leadership quality to him where he's, vocal on the field vocal on the practice field talking trash to other teams firing up his teammates and that that juice is is welcome because you got charles harris on the other side who's a good player but doesn't say squat you know he's just a really workman-like player um and then you know austin bryant really came on strong this training camp just maybe had the best camp of of any player in terms of expectations eventually julian acquire gets back in that mix um so I, I really like the, the moves they made there to improve one of the biggest weaknesses of last couple years. And then receivers, you know, look, that was a disastrous group going into last season and got way worse instantly when, when Tyra Williams gets injured in the, the first half of the first game. Um, obviously, they, they kind of repaired it a little bit midstream. Josh Reynolds' waiver claim was a good addition. Uh, Amon Ra, what, what more can be said? I mean, just probably it, it might go down as Brad Holmes best draft pick ever. If he, even if he GMs in this league for 20 years, it might go down as his best draft pick ever. Um, and then you go out and you get DJ Chark, right? And look, who, who knows what that looks like in the regular season. I don't think he caught a pass in the preseason. Maybe, maybe one, uh, but man, like that guy in the practice field, like he was quiet, quiet, quiet. And then somewhere between the first and second week of training camp, like it's just something clicked with him and golf. And it was like, I, I hate using this comparison because it sounds like hyperbole, but he was doing things in practice that I had not seen from a receiver since Calvin Johnson. Mm. You know, just this, yeah. this exceptional, exceptional second level burst. So he'd be golf would throw one out there and 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 Chark would be looking like he was moving full speed and stride. And then he just has this ability, this knack to accelerate last minute and close the window on where he needs to get for that ball. He's got really good hands, really good tracking ability. I think it was Mike O'Hara that asked him if he had any baseball in his background. It was a completely logical question because the way he tracks the ball looks like a center fielder. So I'm, I'm really, really excited to see what he brings to the table. Um, you know, particularly when, when Jamison gets involved too, right? That might not be till November. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of production from Jamison Williams his rookie year, but uh, to have that, Tyreek Hill light ability, right? Yeah. That guy that can run a crossing route, outrun whoever's covering him, and then just if you find him in space, gone, gone. So, um, I think that's that's really exciting. In terms of of deficiency, you know, I I think I'm still worried about the defensive tackles. Uh, I'm sorry, Benito. I don't I don't know if you're going to save it. Um, I like Aleem McNeil a lot, and I like Aleem McNeil more after watching him work over Quentin Nelson at the Colts practice in ways I could not believe. Um, you know, I think they want to get him more outside of these nose tackle alignments, these two gap alignments and, and kind of explore the athleticism. He had a, he had a pass rush and one-on-one -on -one drills. And I, I think it was just a Colts backup. So it's maybe not as impressive as it sounds, but he did this fake spin move where he kind of quarter turned and then the guy kind of bit on it and he just blew by him. And, and like, Everybody's going crazy. Brockers is yelling. That's Y2K shit, you know, basically <laughs> implying it looked like a video game. Like just he he's an exciting player, but but where is it beyond him? You know, I don't I, th I think Brockers is kind of kind of toast at this point in his career. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but it was a, a, a really rough debut season here. Who knows when Onzarike is gonna get fine and if if ever. Um, you know, and 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 Bugs and, and Taylor, like they're they're kind of crapshoots. So uh, you know, you could use some more depth there. And then obviously long-term and linebacker, you know, that, that just, that position needs talent. Malcolm Rodriguez's story is fantastic. Uh, you, you still kind of hate that they're having to lean on a six round linebacker. I, I, I genuinely believe he is going to be good. I, I don't think the hype is, is false. Just watching how assignment sound he is. And, you know, some of the, the film I watched at his in college before, like he even took off. Like I, I see it. I really do. I see how the wrestling background plays. I see the instincts, um, but you know Alex Anzalone, I think is a is a replacement level player. Derek Barnes took a big step here at the the end of training camp. Really was hitting some of those run fits, but before that was was looking shaky in his development. So I, I think this team has really got to be hard pressed to find an upgrade in talent, a real star at linebacker next off season. All right, final thing, one word answer: six one and word. a half wins in Vegas, over or under. It's a half a win tie. <laughs> one 
What? A... Oh, it's either man. seven or six. Oh, it's tough. It is tough. You know, I haven't thought about it really. I, I'll give them seven. We'll go over. Yeah. All right. Ba- barely over. Yeah, I don't think this is a playoff team, but I, I had it's, it's, I it's, looked it's, the other day and it. went, "Oh, they're still going to beat the Bears twice because Chicago is horrible." And then I watched some Justin they Fields in the preseason. Forty-four guys today. Yeah. So I said, I said maybe maybe Justin Fields could win a game on his own, but that's going to be rough. But uh, Justin, great to uh, see you. Thanks for uh, coming on as always. Of course. See you next Justin. year. You got to bro- oh, stop. Justin Rogers with us from the Detroit News. Follow him on Twitter at Justin underscore Rogers. Read his stuff in the Detroit News and debtnews.com. We're back again tomorrow.